thank you for your unconditional love. Everybody just raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus, for taking my place on that cross, for loving me so much that you erased my past. All sins, failures, mistakes are under the blood of Jesus. That old me is dead. And when you resurrected, I resurrected with you. And I am a new creation. You now live in me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hi. Hi, guys. Welcome to Full House. I'm so happy that everybody's here. All right. Why don't we go ahead and sit? Amen. Jesus is so good. Amen. Why don't you guys go ahead and greet one another? Say hi. Give each other hugs. High fives. have your seats here at Faith Church. We'd like to start off with some announcements. Um, we are going to also start preparing our seats to sow into God's kingdom. We here at Faith Church believe that you should never come empty-handed to God's house, and this is God's house. So why don't we go ahead and prepare our seats? Um, there are several ways of giving here at Faith Church. So most of you guys have envelopes in front of your seats. If you guys don't have one and you guys need one, raise your hand. You guys can also do it through our app. You guys can download our app. Or you guys can go on our website as well. So while you guys prepare that, go ahead and enjoy some announcements on the screens. Welcome to night one of Unveiling Darkness with John Ramirez. We are so excited to have you guys with us here at Faith Church. But before we get started, we want to let you know about a few of the things that we have going on here every single week. If you're from out of town and looking for somewhere to hang out the next two days, come visit our beautiful coffee shop, See Jackie. We're open from Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. And here is our beautiful Faith Church bookstore where we have Bibles, gifts, notebooks, as well as a lot of books, such as this one, written by... This guy? I'm not sure if you guys have heard of him, but I haven't. And here is our beautiful sanctuary where we have our Open Doors class every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. In our Open Doors class, we teach you about your biblical anatomy, which is your body, soul, and spirit. And knowing this is key to understanding not only how demons got in, how to get them out, and how to keep them out. So we invite you to join us every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Also in our sanctuary, we have our young adults group every single Friday at 7 p.m. <laughs> So join us here every single Friday at 7 p.m. for all of you guys who are 18 and up. You can visit our sanctuary anytime during the week, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's always open with music playing, so come soak in the presence of the Lord. Let's give her some privacy. Let's go. Shh, shh, shh. If you check the seat in front of you, we have a bag in every single pocket because we are expecting the Holy Spirit to light those demons on fire tonight at any moment. So don't worry, we got you covered. Well, that's all we have for you tonight. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Faith Church Bakersfield. We also have an app. It's available on the App Store or the Google Play Store, Faith Church Bakersfield. You can see our podcasts, our service times, do your tithes and offerings, and so much more. We hope you're ready to receive a powerful word tonight. And like we like to say here at Faith Church, remember God has already blessed you. Bye. Amen. We are all blessed to be children of the Most High God. Amen. All right. Are you guys ready to sow into God's kingdom? Connect to yourself financially? Yes? Okay, go ahead and stand up. And you guys can lift up your guys' seats and you guys can go ahead and repeat. Thank you, Father. Thank you for Jesus. I know with Jesus you have given me everything. I sow my seed in your kingdom tonight as an act of faith, knowing that you have already provided everything that I will ever need. And I will live in no lack because on that cross, Jesus became poor so that I can be rich. Thank you, Jesus. I sow my seed in faith tonight, knowing that it will reproduce a harvest of a hundredfold 
in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys can come up. So you guys are seats in the white boxes. And while you guys go ahead and have a seat, we do have a few more videos for you guys on the screen. So go ahead and enjoy. I believe God has raised me up for a generation to build the body of Christ, to bring the arsenals of heaven into the body of Christ, into the church. Once you take this course, it's going to bring you to a spiritual warfare a mindset, understanding of the things of the spirit, understanding the tactics, the wiles, the schemes, the plots of the devil. We talking about every demonic playbook that the devil has on the believer, on the church of Jesus Christ today, is being exposed to this e course. You're going to learn the tools to destroy the enemy, to break up stronghold bondages. It's time to pick up our arsenal from heaven and fight the good fight. Not only the book unmasking the devil, but there's an amazing e course that's going to help you fight the good fight. You know, go into the battlefield, accomplish the mission, come back out, and give Jesus Christ a trophy and be more than a conqueror. God bless you, my brothers and sisters, your brother in Christ, John Ramirez. I just want to bless you today. I have exciting news. I'm writing and I'm talking about a supernatural book it's called Five Prayer Destroying Satanic Kingdoms. Amen. With Charisma House, I have the opportunity. God has opened the door with a new publishing house. Man, it's going to be a new season. It's going to be a spiritual warfare at its best. A lot of times we talk about the devil, but we don't confront. A lot of times we understand that the devil comes up patterns and cycles of repeat, hindering, delay, blockages, distraction and we don't know how to confront these things. The Bible says that the kingdom of God suffer violent, but the violent take it back by force. And prayer, fire prayers, destroying satanic kingdoms, we are talking about demolishing the stronghold, the bondages, the besetting sins. We're talking about living the life that God has for you, your God's perfect will over your life. The devil understands, and all the devil wants you to do general prayers, you know, general prayers, and, and it's a good thing to general prayers, but when you're dealing with satanic alignment, satanic kingdom, when you deal with the devil himself, when you deal with stronghold, generational curses, demonic systems, demonic frequency, demonic atmosphere. You need a book like Fire Prayer, destroying satanic kingdom, building up your, your arsenals in Christ, building up your arsenals of heaven over your life, your family, to get the breakthrough, to get the perfect will of God in your life, to live the perfect will of God over your life. Yes, battles will come, but you'll be more than a conqueror. Battles will come, wars will come, but you'll be more than a conqueror. You know, it's amazing how God says, the Lord says, be more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Amen. We fight, but we don't conquer. And it's time to conquer. It's time to get back what the devil has stolen from you. It's time to break the patterns and cycles of repair, every hindering, delay, blockages, distractions against your life. Fire prayer is a book designed for the believer to go higher and deeper with Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a prayer arsenal language in your spirit by an anointed by the Holy Spirit to give you that victory, to give you that place that you belong. You know, it's, it's time to stop shrinking back. It's time to let the devil get away where he get away with. It's time to put the, set the record straight against the enemy and have that life that God has called for you and for me. I am excited. The book is going to come out. It's going to be a blessing to the body of Christ. I'm telling you, you'll never be the same. You'll be transformed in your spiritual warfare language. And believe me, the enemy will know your name. And he knows that you picked the wrong Christian to match with because you have something in your spirit. You have something that God gave you to fight the good fight. In Jesus' name, my brothers and sisters, blessings to all. I'm excited. The book will be out next year, and it's going to touch you. Charisma House, thank you for the opportunity to give me to put this book together by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to change, transform, and it's going to bring alignment. It's going to bring precision, and it's going to bring leverage in your life against the enemy of your soul. Blessings to all. Amen. We are more than victorious in Christ Jesus. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Okay. Why don't we go ahead and welcome our special guest, John Ramirez. Round of applause. Woo! Man, blessings. With me? Amen. Thank at least one person is alive. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We got one person that's alive. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody else. Sleepy, huh? 
I, I just want to share a moment before we get in. I, I want to thank pastors inviting me back. And it's, it's a humble moment when people invite you and you preach for the first time in a place, but then God does something special. He builds relationships. Amen. And I, my prayer always been with the Lord. Lord, I want to build relationships with pastors and leaders and people that are really kingdom minded, not church minded, kingdom minded, right? <laughs> church minded, it's a Sunday thing, right? Kingdom minded is a Jesus thing, with right, me? And uh, kingdom minded is part of the remnant. There's a remnant God is raising up. There's a remnant God is preparing. There's a remnant that God is equipping. There's a remnant that God is discipling. Christians, we have two types of Christians. We got sellouts and we got those that are sold out. It's a difference between a sellout. That's just the Christian that is a pimp. That they just want to sow a seed, sow a seed for $1,000. And you're going to get yourself a Julio. Well, no, there's a Julio here. Uh, you're gonna get, <laughs> that's a good Julio. You'll get yourself a Fred or Slap Willy or Freaky Freddy. End up one of those. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so when we, when we, you know, we understand there's reaping and sowing in the kingdom. You with me? There's reaping and sowing in the kingdom, but it's, it's about the biblical way of doing it. So God is raising up a remnant, and God is preparing a spiritual church, a spiritual warfare church. God's not preparing a church. And there's, there, you know, one, one thing I was impressed about this church that they were teaching stuff that was, when I first came here, they said, we're teaching this thing, how to build your inner man, how to heal your inner man, and how to set your inner man free. Amen. And it was like, I was like, wow, this is like powerful. And I saw some of the teachings and whatnot, right? I saw some of the teaching and whatnot. Okay, chill. Don't manifest yet. Let me preach. <laughs> Hold on to the demon. And, 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 and my, my thing was, if you don't build your inner man and you're more concerned about the flesh man, the flesh man is a man that brings hindering delay and blockages to the inner man. You with me? So that's why I, I want to say to you, I want to. I want to say to you. Do me a favor, my sister. Look. Look at me. Let me help you. Look at me. Hmm? You can see in the spirit. No, no, no. You don't make a scene. Okay. 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 Listen to me. Okay. Listen. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. We don't need you. Okay. Okay. I, I, that's cool. I, I'm. I'm in love with that. But you're more important in my book. Duh. Yeah. Well, duh. Okay, all I want you to relax, and I want God to do something special for you. Okay? I'm, I don't have to touch you. Holy Spirit is in the house. Holy Spirit is in the house. Okay, okay, okay. My sister, listen to me. I want to bless you. You're here because God brought you here. Holy Spirit drew you here. Okay? Because he loves you too much to leave you in the condition you're in. Okay? All right? So, so, so just let me help you. Are you, are you with her, my brother? Your wife, let me help both of you, right? Because I know it's hard to have spiritual wolf in your house and no one helping you. Okay? So I, I do want to help you. Help both of you. Amen? Because I understand I'm married too and I got spiritual wolf in my house. And I want God to help me and do the things that needs to be done. So I'm here to help you. Just have a seat. I'm here to help you. Okay? So let me let, let me let me share a moment with you, right? If if Discipleship and spiritual warfare is very key. Amen? Because it's about being teachable. Amen? It's about being teachable. So I, I want to do something. I want I want to do something. And I want to help you with something. And one, one thing is about, if you're a lazy Christian, God can never trust you with your anointing. God's not going to give lazy Christians an anointing. You with me? You, let me tell you about the witches in Christianity. And if there's witches here, you, 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 you picked the wrong house. Because I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, 
I got, I'm going to break the news to you. I'm like Doc Holliday. Have you ever watched Tombstone? I, I'm your Huckleberry. I'm not afraid of no ghosts. That was my movie back in the day, Ghostbusters. <laughs> Amen. So just giving you a heads up. But I want, I want to show you and teach you something. Amen. Because if you want God to put a greater anointing in your life, then you have to pay a price. You have to do the work. You, you have to sacrifice in order to get that greater anointing in your life. You can't be the Simon the Sorcerer and pay for the anointing. You understand? You, you got to sacrifice something. So I, I want to teach you. I want to equip you. And I want to show you how God, you how God can trust you with a greater anointing in your life. Amen? Because the bottom line is if, if you can't take the pastor home, his wife can, but you can. You with me? You can't take John Ramirez home unless you got free food. <laughs> got some rice and beans and pork chops and totones and all that stuff. I'm there, brother. But then if you got some Taco Bell in your house, man, I had a, I had I had a real burrito in uh, in uh, San Antonio. Ain't no make it was real. I mean, I'm talking about like, man, I mean, I, I licked the plate, the styrofoam. <laughs> That's how good it was. Mexican out there, they know what they're doing. That stuff was the real deal. That burrito was like phew, better than manna. <laughs> and the lady that bought it for me, I was like, oh God, if you touch her heart, tell them to buy me another one. <laughs> her heart was like hard. She didn't buy me another one. So before I get into the message, I want to show you something. This is, how I, this is how I fight. I take this book, I take this book, and I mix it with this one. I take this book, I mix it with this one. See that? Then I take this book, I take this book, Conquering Your Deliverance. I mix it with this one. The life, let me tell you, the, the life of Joseph was an amazing life because Joseph knew how to conquer. Because when Joseph met the brother for the second time, you with me? He forgave them. And then when he met his father later, he never told the father what the brothers did. He conquered unforgiveness. See, we don't conquer. That's why the same devil come back six months and fight you again. And this is, I mix these two books together. I'm teaching you something, right? The bookstore ain't going to teach you that, and Charisma ain't going to teach you that, and Chosen ain't going to teach you that, and Destiny House ain't going to teach you that. Then I mix these together. Because, you see, unmasking means if you can't unmask something, identify it, then you can't have victory over it. You'll be fighting and hitting the air, but you're not hitting targets. You with me? You're not hitting targets. You're hitting air, but no targets because what you can't bring down, what you can't not identify. That's why Christians walk around with patterns and cycles of repeat because you think that you brought it down. You think you brought down the altars and the demonic strongholds and bondages or generational curses, but you didn't bring nothing down. The devil, what the devil did, he sent a diversion. You got the diversion, but you never got the real fight. And so when, when you know how to unveil, unmask the methods and the schemes and the wiles of the enemy, then you have victory. That's what the book destroying, that's what the book Fire Prayer say. It said building, building arsenals to destroy satanic kingdoms. You with me? You got to build your arsenals in order to fight the good fight. You can't just go in just because you know the name of Jesus. Look at the resume of the sons of Sceva. They knew the name. They borrowed the name. But they didn't win no fight. You know what happened to them. They had to go clothes shopping after that. That was a good beat down. You know when someone beat you down and your clothes fall off? That's a ghetto beat down. That's like an East L.A., Compton, South Bronx beat down. <laughs> 
with me? So I want, I want to do something. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you for the next 30 days, you grab this book and read it. And you, tell, you email me and tell me how your life turned out to be. Amen? I'm, I'm, I got, listen, I'm ahead of sell books. Listen, my book is the number one seller in Amazon already. The book been out two months. Charisma just called me. What, what is your next book? I'm like, chill, dude. I'm like, <laughs> they're like, what, what is your next book? I'm like, dude, the book, the, dude, the book only been out 60 days. You know, calm down. 60 days, you already asked me what's my next book. I need to, I need to spend time with my wife. I need to do, I need to see my daughter. I need to, I need to talk to my mom. I got no time for that. You know, I'm not thinking next book. So who, who, let me ask you a question. Who wants a book and who's going to pay for it after the leave? Come on, raise your hand, people. Come on. I'm, I have them here. I only have a few. I have them here. Come on. Yeah. Pass them to the people. Don't be Puerto Rican here and leave without the back door. <laughs> Don't be Puerto Rican here and leave back door. Don't be Puerto Rican. You, then after you leave, you pay for the book. But read it. The, 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 the challenge is read it for 30 days and thir- read it 30 days and then email the ministry. I'll email you back and tell me what the book did for you. Come on. I'm serious. Huh? If you don't pay for the book, listen. T- <laughs> torment is, the torment is coming after you. Amen? <laughs> We're talking about the tormentors are coming after if you don't pay for the book. Don't be Spanish up in here. This ain't Marshalls and TJ Maxx. <laughs> 36 books, 36 people. I know how to count that far. I got off the little bus, but I know how to count. You know the little bus, right? The retard bus. People say, why you say that? Why you say retard? I mean, you know, I grew up, I can qualify for the retard bus. I had A in gym, A in lunch. Everything was F. Yeah, bring the other ones. I'm serious stuff. This is a challenge. If you don't want to take the Pepsi challenge, that's okay. Drink Dr. Pepper. If you don't want to take the Pepsi challenge, drink Dr. Pepper. This is a challenge. I, w- I want to see your life transform in 30 days. I want your prayer line. I want you to go high and deeper with the Lord. Forget this mediocre chicken coop Christianity. Forget that. They ain't going to get you nowhere. And your crazy pastor, he, ain't, he don't know nothing about no spiritual warfare anyway. I'm talking about challenging you to grow, to prosper. To be, to, be, to, be, to be a weapon in God's arm, to be an arrow in his quiver. That's what I'm asking you to be. I'm not asking you just to have a book because you want me to sign it. Right? If you for that, then leave the book alone. I'm talking about a book for you to be the, what God called you to be in 30 days. Amen. And then finish your year strong. I got prayers there. I got prayers there to teach you how to repent. I got prayers to teach you how to repent. People don't know how to repent these days. Let me, t- let me just say something. We get into the message. You know that there's, there's two people in the Bible. You with me? Pay attention. Focus. There's two people in the Bible. They betrayed the same person. Peter and Judas betrayed the same person. You, you with me? One, got forg- one was forgiven and the other one went to hell. You with me? One was forgiven the other one went to hell. You know why? Because one repented and the other one had remorse. It's Christians today, the reason you never got your full victory because you cried out to God in remorse, not in true repentance. And then you, you, you have, you wonder why you're not moving forward. You, you're on the hamster, you're the hamster on the wheel, but you're not moving forward because your life is a life of remorse, not a true repentance. And I'm teaching Christians how to throw yourself in the mercy of the court, do the book, how to truly repent. Jesus, listen, Peter repented so good. That when Jesus met him for the second time, Jesus asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Peter said, you know, Lord, Peter, he was telling me, he was covering his three denials, three times, asked him. And even, even to the point, let me take a step further. Jesus is so much into details 
that even when Peter was warming himself on the fire coals, if you read the Bible, right, the fire coals, that's like a smoke damage, nightmare, because Peter remembered the moment that he was warming himself over the fire that had coals. And he knew he betrayed his Savior. When Peter met Jesus and he was on the boat and threw himself in the water, what Jesus was doing in the, in the beach? Cooking? Breakfast? Or what? Coals. Because he didn't want, G he didn't want Peter to, smoke, to smell like smoke damage. Even down to the coals. That he remembered that instinct in his mind. That betrayal and his mindset that the devil was tormenting him. Even Jesus took care of that situation. I think I preach. I can do an altar call just on that. You with me? We got the books? Where's my people? Where's my gang? My pastor, you get the books out? Any left? No left? Huh? No, okay. I got fire press tomorrow. I'm going to bless someone with this. I'm going to pay for this one. I'm going to give this one away. I'm going to pay for this. So John is not stingy. <laughs> bless you with it, my brother. Man, I'm going to pay for your book. Man. Now you email me. I email you back. And you let me know what the book did for your prayer language. What the book did for your spiritual warfare walk. Because you can walk with God, you can walk with Jesus, but if you don't have spiritual warfare, you're nothing but a mediocre Christian. Okay, let me get to the message. You with me? I have more books tomorrow, right? Man, I'm going to break into the store. And then repent. I'm doing it for y'all. Amen. <laughs> Hey, listen, them days, we got some free stuff. We ate. We broke into the supermarket. We ate. Grew up in the ghetto. Free food, nothing better than free food. <laughs> let, let me, I, I want to I wanna just share a moment with you, right? I, I want to share a moment. Matthew, Matthew 16, 24 says, Then Jesus said to the disciples, If anyone desire to f come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. That is Jesus' story, right? That's Jesus say so. Jesus is saying this, right? Pick up, in other words, pick up the cross is pick up your calling. Pick up your purpose, your destiny. What God has designed you to be and to do and to finish. It's not, it, it pick up your calling. It is God, it's a God of purpose. God is telling pick up your purpose and follow me. You with me? God is saying pick up your purpose and follow me. Not your own self, not your own ambition, not your own will, not your own agenda, not your own direction, and not your own fulfillment. Do only his will. TV people doing themselves. Most of the people on today, pastors and preachers, they're doing themselves. They're doing their story. They're doing their story. They're doing themselves. How many people follow? How many people? How many likes I got on Instagram? I don't care about Instagram. I don't care about Facebook. I don't care about none of that stuff. I use the devil's billboard to put Jesus on it. I don't care how many likes. If you like me, that's cool. If you don't, I don't care. If I've been with Jesus, who are you? See, the, the enemy of your soul, listen to the, the enemy of your soul lives in the between. The enemy of your soul lives in the between of your process. You with me? Your process is part of your purpose and your destiny. There's always going to be a devil in that location, in that place, in the between. There's always going to be a devil to interfere, to interrupt, you know, to stop the process of God in your life. Jesus had a devil that tried to stop him to go to the cross. What was Jesus' mission? 
the cross. What was Jesus? What was the process for Jesus to get to the cross, right? And who showed up to stop him? Peter. Well, you ain't going to the cross, homie, because you know, you know, I got your back. Peter, Satan used Peter to stop the process of Jesus going to the cross. Who's stopping your process to get to the place that God wants you to be? Who? Because in the end, you're going to have to give God an account. Because God's going to ask you two questions when you get to heaven. It's not in the Bible, but I'm just going <laughs> with my own. God's going to ask you two questions when you get to heaven. He's going to ask you, what you did with the time on the earth that I gave you? Because he gave you a birthday and sent you into time. What are you going to say? And the second thing he's going to ask you, did you glorify my son Jesus Christ? And what are you going to say? By hanging out with Julio. Well, not Julio, Fred, because Julio's here. <laughs> I want hanging out with Fred. Who are you hanging out with? What are you doing? How are you living that is not productive? That every year, you're still the same. The year change, but you don't. The year change, but you don't. I'm, I'm talking to somebody here tonight. Because, you see, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, this is the devil's game plan. I gave you Jesus, right? Pick up your cross, pick up your calling, and follow me, right? That's what Jesus is saying, right? Now I'm going to give you the devil's game plan, right? 2 Corinthians 11, this is the devil's game plan. The devil's game plan is let's sit and should take advantage of you, right, of us. We are not ignorant of his devices, right? So what the Bible is saying there. What the Bible is saying there, and this is Paul speaking in Corinthians about a man that slept with his stepmother in the church. You don't need Jerry Springer. We had Jerry Springer back then. <laughs> he's not talking to the world. He's talking to the church. Right? Don't be ignorant. Don't be foolish. Don't, don't, the Bible says that my people perish because of what? Right, that's what God is saying in this scripture. Why? Because they don't want to, you don't want to be teachable. When the pastor corrects you, you, you get upset. You, because you see, in the church of God, what the devil is using is a spirit of offense. A spirit of offense. I'm offended. But you're not offended at work with that cheap paycheck you're getting. When the boss tell you off and he tell you down and he put you down and that cheap paycheck you're getting, that the IRS, what is it, April 15th already, they're taking your money. When I was in the world, this, when I was in the world, I shouldn't say this because the IRS might be watching. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward, change my mind, change my mind, <laughs> change my mind. You know what I'm talking about. I put down the dog, the cat, <laughs> the neighbor. I put that on everybody. There. Anything that breathed and had a social security number. <laughs> you get read between the lines. Praise the Lord. I'm saved. So, 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 so listen. The, in other words, the Bible is talking about the methods, the schemes, the wiles, the entrapment of the devil. Because the devil is trying to destroy your purpose, your destiny. The devil is trying to destroy it. You with me? You so far you with me? That's what I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you. Because in the end, you're gonna have to give an account. You're gonna have to give an account. God, one, God, God is so gangster. God is so gangster that he's saying you stand in front of him on judgment day. He said, Gabriel, look for the name. He already know your name ain't there. And you sweating. You sweating like whew. Oh, help me. I hope my name is there. This ain't, this ain't the club, baby. You're not on the VIP list. You hoping your name is there. But it's not. You know, let me share two things with you. 
You know, an atheist is a believer one minute too late. And you know, a person that goes to hell repents a minute too late. And you know, Christianity is off the hook. Let me tell you why. Because every other religion, you have to chase their God. And in Christianity, Jesus chases you. Amen. How you like them apples, Muhammad? <laughs> true, not true. Because you was at the club, and you would dress up like a hoochie. And you were dancing, and the white people were in the club. And they were dancing to the words, not to the beat. Because y'all don't know how to dance. <laughs> Just saying. Pray for me. And I was at the club. I was, every, I was Cinco de Mayo. I was Mexican. <laughs> In June something, I was Puerto Rican. I was reggae. I was Jamaican. I went to every event. Long as I had free beer. So let me, let me, let me, let me, God, you, I want you to listen. God uses, God uses every painful moment to enlarge the answer to your prayer. You with me? Your greatest, your greatest ministry will come out of your greatest hurts. So don't let the devil lie to you and think because you're being afflicted that you, that the devil got took advantage of you. You with me? The will of God is never exactly the way we expect it. God is too big to fit in your head. God is too big to fit in your, God, in your heart. You can't figure him out. You can't, you can't put your finger on him. That's why Jesus has to reveal himself to you. And then another thing I tell you, want me to tell you another thing? You with me? How do you trust another religion to get you to heaven? They've never been there. <laughs> how do you trust Muhammad to get you to heaven? He's never been there. How do you trust Buddha? Buddha can't even get you down the block. He's fat. <laughs> he gets tired. <laughs> Think about it. How you trust, how you trust a God that is not Christ, Jesus, to get you to heaven. You can't get to heaven because you don't know the address. You've never been there. I don't care what kind of GPS you got. You ain't going to get there. Jesus Lived there, came from there, came to get you, and know how to bring you back because he know the way. So I'm going to bet on, I, I don't know about you, but I'm going to bet on Jesus. Because I'm going to bet on someone that know how to get, they been there, came, and went back, and coming back. I'm, 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 I'm going to take his, I'm going to go with him. I'm going to go with him because he knows the way. Ain't that something, huh? The things I just think about him when I'm taking a bubble bath. <laughs> I don't take bubble bath. That sounds, that sounds so gay. <laughs> I take it back. And if, you got, if you're gay and you want to write me, you can write me. I'll pray for you. I'm not afraid of you. The problem is, the problem is, the problem is that we trying to tell God how to do his job. We trying to tell God how to do his job. How is the clay is going to tell the potter how to form me? You need to like... Throw the key away. When you're in your prayer closet, they say, your prayer closet is not Costco's. You have a list of all kind of crap. When you get in your prayer closet and say, speak, Lord. 
And if you don't speak, you stay there and you come back to them tomorrow. Try for a week. Speak, Lord. Because when we're in the prayer closet, we say a whole bunch of things. And then what happened is we leave because we punched the clock out. And God was about to speak and you missed it. You with me? How I sound in Spanish? Hola. For people that got the little things on their ears. The process. The, the, the bad news that the devil leaves between the process. The devil lives between your process, right? The devil lives between your purpose and your destiny because between the purpose and the destiny on the next side, there's a promised land. And the devil knows that he's trying to stop you, delay you, hinder and delay and blockage to get to your promised land. Satan can't get, listen, Satan, Satan, did not, Satan can't get you to, Satan, Satan can't get you to deny Christ. He's trying to get you to deny Christ. That's what I'm trying to say. Understand? If he don't push you to deny Christ like Peter, he's trying to distort Jesus in your life. And the church has done a great job to distort Jesus Christ in the church. The gospel is being distorted in the house of God. And the devil is doing a good job to distort the word of God. And Paul said they preach any other gospel than the one I preach to you. Let them be cursed. And most of you, sad to say, you're sitting under a curse. Because you know what's sad about people? People relocate. This is crazy. COVID-19 hit. Everybody had a mask on, right? It looked like Halloween. Everybody had a mask on, right? And then you got the Democrat people. Right, the Democrat, New York and California, Democrat people. Oh, COVID nineteen here. I'm moving to Texas. <laughs> I hate to disappoint you. Texas is a Republican state. So I say, <laughs> you're a Democrat. You're a devil worshipper. You vote for the you vote for Elmo in the White House. And it's not politics. I'm teaching you something. And then you move to a Republican state. How delusional are you? Think about it. For safety. You started this mess. You voted for Elmo. I'd rather have Trump and say, I don't like the way he talked, but he's, he's, he's keeping my gas tank very happy. <laughs> I don't have to buy $7 apples. Got the inflation. I mean, who buys a $7 apple? You gotta, I go to Whole Food. I eat organic. Baby, you're going to die anyway. I, I, got, I hate to break the news. You're going to die anyway. So you might as well eat crazy. You might as well eat the good stuff, the bacon, the eggs, let it be greasy. Because you want it, it, People say, I, I do oil love, whatever you call that, how you call that crap in your face. Yeah, because I don't want the wrinkles. I do Botox. You're going to get oil anyway. Save the money. You prolonging nothing. <laughs> I want me to get shot in the face, Botox. I'm going, I'm going to New York in, in May, get a shot in the eye. I'm like, oh, Lord. Can't you just spit in my eye and just fix it? <laughs> We're distorting Jesus in the house of God. Because whatever you distort... You won't be able to see the real thing. You'll get a bootleg. You'll get a copycat. And that's what the devil is doing. You know the devil separated Jesus from the cross in the house of God. And we're preaching a new age Jesus. And then this is the thing I want to tell you. You, you have this McDonald job. Supersize my fries, right? And then you go. You, you, you drive two hours to go to your Mickey D job. But you won't drive one hour to come to a good church. And you wonder why you're still working in Mickey D's. Because dead churches, dead churches don't, they don't prosper you spiritually. 
you decay yourself, you deplete yourself, you incarcerate yourself, and you become spiritually anemic. Because you, you want to sit in a comfortable place because it's close to home. But then you, you, you go work for McDonald's because you need that lousy paycheck. Or people relocate. You've seen people relocate. Oh, they got an awesome mall. Oh, you got to go to that mall. Them stores off the hook. Oh, the food's delicious. But what about a good church? Do they have a good church in the region? Do they have a real church there preaching the real gospel? I don't know. I just know they got a good mall. They got two TJ Maxx. <laughs> you see the condition of the church? Because when you distort Jesus, when you distort the gospel, you can't see Jesus. When you distort the gospel, you won't see the real Jesus. You, you won't see the good news. You see fake news. And we're preaching fake news today. We're talking about in the media. Fake news, CNN. Fox is fake. All those people are fake. They just, dress up the, they just dress up the drama in a different suit. I don't trust none of them. I hear people saying, I'm getting me a Tesla. <laughs> One will glow me. I want that Z06, brother. I want to make noise. Yeah. Piss off the neighbors. <laughs> Rev that thing up to the highest RPM. Leave it parked. Let the smoke come out. <laughs> Smell it. It's gasoline. It's not electric. If you want a car, you get your car. If you want to get ripped off, go somewhere else. So, listen, when you walk into us, when you walk in to buy a car, even a used car, their they mind is to rip you off. Believe me, they say, you need this, you need that. Oh, this is the policy, this is this. Oh, crap, crap, crap. Crap, crap, crap. Believe me. Man, in life, you got to get a good car dealer right here. You got to get a good dentist. I got to believe me. I went to New York, and I was like, hey, could you fix my mouth? He, he, he did a, a quick tune-up on it. He said to fix it, 80000 dollars 80000 I was like, dude, 80000 I went on Facebook. I said, anybody know about a good dentist that's cheap? For like real cheap. And three people came out and said, John, we've been to your meeting. We own our own practice. Come, I will do it for you for free. The favor of God. We do it for free. I went to San Diego. They did my whole mouth practically for free. See how God works? The favor of the Lord is bigger than money. Maybe. So listen, listen, today. Today, today, you see, today, this is what Christians do. I hear many Christians today saying, and I'm teaching you. I hear many Christians saying today, well, I pray, I pray, and God didn't answer my prayer. No, baby, you are wrong. You know why you're wrong? Let me, let me help you. Let me help you. It may be, listen, maybe, maybe seems that God did not answer your prayer Right? That's what you're saying. Right? Prayer, when you are going to something tough. You know how we go into, we get real religious. But we get real, we start fasting when all hell breaks loose. We don't fast, but when hell breaks loose, we drop the donuts. Right? We, we're going to fast. I mean, we just get into a fast, right? Same thing when I'm on a plane, and I'm on a plane, and, and plane going, and then they said, we're going to hit some rough air, let the, let the flight attendant sit down, and all this other thing. Man, the Delta turns into a Christian plane. Everybody, <laughs> everybody speaking in tongues. I'm like, dude, you, <laughs> you don't even go to church. With 37,000 feet, we have in church. <laughs> 30,000. The issue may be that we, right, that we did not like the answer he gave us. 
And that's why you say, he didn't answer my prayers. Because God is not Burger King. Oh, that's good right there. Because we we trying to duck the process. See, we 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 want the victory, no process. We want the promotion, no process. We want to call we want to be called bishop, but no one wants to pay a price. We want to be called the Pope, not the Pope. I'll take that back. <laughs> you don't want to be the Pope. People want promotion. It's like we collect the, I, the, young, the, the precious sister came up. We're gonna, we're gonna collect. We're gonna collect. We're gonna collect an offering. It's like someone stabbed you. <laughs> I heard people face cringe. Like someone, you, you, people pulling teeth without no uh, anesthesia. But then you want God to bless you financially. You want God to give you promotion. You want God to give you money. You want God to give you business. You want to be an entrepreneur. But you, 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 you hold on to your 20 or your 30, your 50, your 100. You're robbing God. But you want God to open the windows of heaven and part of blessing that will overtake you. Ain't that going to, COVID-19 is going to take you. Because you don't trust God with your money. That's the bottom line. It's not the offering. It's you don't trust God with your money. So you go in your pocket and you look, at, you look for the smallest bill. I'm teaching you because I used to be that way. I'm like, why the church needs my money? Get your own. Why, 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 you, why, why, you have, why do I have to give? God's not broke. That's my, that was my mindset. And God said, how could I trust you with money? If you don't know how to give. And I was, I was, I was, I was I, and then some pastors came from, uh, from, from Florida. Friends of mine said, John, we, we noticed that financially you look like you're hurting. I'm like me? No, I got 20 in my pocket. I'm not hurting. <laughs> they said, yes, you are. Are you tithing? You giving to the Lord? I'm saying, he don't need my money. The Bible says God owns a cat of a thousand hills. What would he want my 20? They said, it's not, it's not that. It's your, it is the it's, it's, I still go to heaven, but it's a spirit of poverty. See, you don't have to come to church. You can still go to heaven, but the sad thing, you'll never be a growing Christian. Am I right? You can come to church and still go to heaven, but the sad thing about it, you'll go deformed. You'll never be a growing Christian because if you could say, I love God, but I hate the church, but then you hate what God died for. Because the mission of the church that God left here is to finish the work. So how are you counting yourself out? Understand? So, so how is it that financially you're not blessed because you don't trust God with your finances? And I'm telling you that because there's people sitting here. You could be entrepreneurs today and you're killing your dream. You're killing your dream. You're killing your dream. You're killing your dream because you... Rather hold on to the crumbs than trust God for the loaf of bread. That's okay. See, you're ducking the process. People want to duck the process. People want to be blessed. That's why the, those pimp preachers, they pimp you. Because you're stupid enough to fall into the trap. They pimp you because, you see, the process, it's, it's a suffering place. It's a dying place, the process. Jesus, when Jesus was at the garden, he was going through the process. It looked like he was dying. He, he was sweating blood, uh, uh, sweats of blood. He was going through the process before he went to the cross. So you don't want to go to the process because you don't want to pay the price. So you go to these pimp preachers, and they sell you oil from Costco. They tell you they're from Israel. $100 a bottle. They got Julio in the, not Julio. They got, they got, they got Pedro, they got Pedro in the back pumping the oil for you and putting a, a, a label on it. Because you can get that label from whatever, Photoshop, whatever. You put a label on it. Fresh from Israel. Jesus touched it. And you fall for that and then so see. So see. I was somewhere, I'm not going to say where because I, I, I love my brother, but I was somewhere. In 40 minutes, they put this lady up. She collected $150,000 in 40 minutes. 
I'm talking about 150,000 Benjamins in 40 minutes. You with me? People, it's, it, you give for the right reason, but you don't give to get promoted. Then when I mean promoted means you don't give because you want a greater anointing. You, you, you don't give because you want a greater calling. You give because you want to further the kingdom, but the greater anointing and the greater calling come by paying the ultimate price. A suffering, a suffering, a place to be broken. Because you see, when a person is broken, you can, you can get the oil from Costco or you can get the oil from the supermarket and it costs five bucks. But what did it cost the olive? Right? And that's what I'm talking to you about, right? Don't, listen, we try to crucify the devil. Baby, stop doing that. The devil is the devil's defeated. Crucify your flesh. Crucify your flesh, it's still alive. Because in the process, listen, in the process where everything has to die, is a dying place. It's a place of death in the process. Understand? You got to pick up your cross and follow, right? Because when you pick up your cross and you follow him, understand? You don't disappoint him. The fear of God means I don't want to disappoint him. So when, you, when you're in the process, when you're in the process, when everything dies, your ideas, your mental, your, your, your mindset, your theology, your, your thinking, your, your flesh, your, your man-made inventions die in the process. Understand? That's why the process, listen, in the process, the, the devil in the process, when everything dies, the devil don't have no dominion over you. No, he have no say so. He has no power. He has no legal right. He has no territory over you in the process because you're dying in the process. Your own ideas, your own flesh, your own thinking, your own reasoning, your own methodologies in the process is dying. God is purifying you in the process. How could you become the bride? How could you become the bride of Christ, the body in the army? Because God, got, God made three components out of us. He made the bride, the body, and the army out of you. You with me? No process. Listen. No process. Who's shaping you, God or the devil? What spiritual hands, what hands is on you, God or the devil on your spiritual life? Think about it. Who you see in the process? You see Jesus or you see the devil? Who's you see in the process? Because the devil trying to alter you. He's trying to change you. He's trying to distort you. He's trying to do that to your purpose and your destiny. Taking your identity is an identity thief, deforming you when God, is trying to, when God is trying to transform you. The bride, the body, and the army. To be a great original in Christ. The devil's game is to make you a mediocre. This is what the devil does. Be mediocre. Be normal. Fit in. Be a copycat. Because if, if the devil wants you to be more concerned about the opinions of people than the truth of God. And the devil wants you to give up everything that God has put in you. Just fit in. Dress like they do. No anointing. They got influence, but no anointing. The devil was able to trick a third of the angels because he had influence. You with me? And today, preachers don't have an anointing. They got influence. Influence. Why do you think today social media is ramping with what? Influencers. To distract you, to distort you, to steal your time for what God has for you. It's like a cancer that's eating away in social media. The influencers, they sit in Hollywood. And when the votes, when, the, when Elmo and, 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 and Sesame Street want to get votes, they bring out the influencers. The Jennifer Lopez, the Mark Anthony's, the Jay-Z's, the Illuminati devils. 
they bring out those people. The creatures of the night comes out. The influencers. They can sing. They can prophesy. I was telling pastor, my aunt that passed away, she was 80 years old. She was in witchcraft for 60-something years. And I was telling pastor that I can take my aunt that passed away. And she denied Jesus. You with me? And she'd rather die without Jesus. She went to hell. That's how devoted of a witch she was. And I was under her training and training of other high-ranked devil worshippers for 25 years of my life. So devil worshipping is a dead end. So what happened with, the, what happened with my aunt? My aunt was prophetically, demonically a prophetic person. You with me? I could take my aunt. Well, she's dead now, but I'm talking about back then. I can take her, dress up like a Christian teach her three scriptures, and she'll come in here, and she'll prophesy to you, and you will believe that she's a prophet. You will believe that she's a prophet. She'll read your mail like no tomorrow. She'll read your social security number. She'll read your mail. She'll tell names of your family members. She'll tell you conditions and situations in your family, and you think that she's a prophet of God. And she's a witch, wicked, devil worshiper. Because we have lost our discernment in the house of God. Because we're in love with the gifts and the influences, but not the anointing anymore. No anointing, no presence of God, no anointing. Entertainment. You're impressed because someone calls you up and he knows what baseball team you like. Then they emotionalize you. Then they hit you over the head. So see. So see. Pay, pay, pay Simon the sorcerer. So see. See, I'm not in the clique. They don't like me too much. I'm cool with that, but Jesus loves me. Because I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. And the truth has set you free. I'm not, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a prophet. I'm the mailman. I come to drop off the mail. Take it up with heaven if you don't like it. <laughs> email the Lord. You can email him in your prayer closet. He'll get it. And trust me, God knows how to respond to your email. So I'm telling you. You know, you, know, you know that the Bible says in Matthew 14, the Bible says in Matthew 14, it says, they will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, we prophesy. We did miracles. We cast out demons. They will say that day. And what Jesus said to them, depart from me. I never, what? Knew you. Why? Say that again. There you go. Someone's reading the Bible. Praise the Lord. That's what they say. You know why God is saying that to them? Because they were in love with the gifts. They had no fruit. Jesus cursed the fig tree because it had an appearance of something but had no fruit. The fruit is the life of Jesus in your life. Amen. Ministry, mini the gifts are the ministry of Jesus in your life. And if you don't have fruit to bring to the master... Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. So today we got influencers with gifts. And the devil is operating the gifts. And they're influencers because they lost their anointing. And they don't have no fruit. And they're going to stand in front of an awesome God. And God's going to say, depart from me. Because they thought that the influencers was the anointing. I can see it. Because I did it in witchcraft. I can, I can come into a church. In witchcraft and prophesy, lay hands and cast out demons in the church of God. I, I was able to do, I can come in and do that because demons play the role of being cast out in the demonic world. So you can entrap you. I can say, you got a curse. Let me, let me do a ceremony. Let me do a ritual on you and I take that curse off you. So the demon plays out with the other demon. Because in Genesis or Revelation, I've never seen a demon fight another demon. 
I've seen pastors fight pastors. <laughs> right, Satan can't cast Satan, right? And Jesus said that the kingdom of darkness is in order. Yes? So they play them out. Now you fall into the trap. I say, oh, my God, that guy hurt me now. And then I say, you need to do a ceremony. You need to do a cleansing, $450. I'm just drawing you deep into the ocean. As I join deep into the ocean now, you have to do santo. You have to do santeria now. Now you have to do a ceremony with Santa Monte. And I, you pay me. Now I'm bringing you deep into the water, to the dark waters of the demonic world. Because now you feel like you're indebted because the, 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 the witchcraft or the, or the spell that you had on you was taken off. It was never taken off. It, the demon left you alone. I, I did it all. I did it all. It was, my life was nothing about human bones. I had human bones, drink my blood, drink animal blood. I did it all. So when you come up to me, you're a witch, I'll eat your lunch. Because <laughs> you, you, you were never as high as I was. And now that I'm in Jesus, I destroy your powers. The person that did, I got a ceremony right here. I got cuts in my body. The person that did my cuts in my body, his name was Chago. He was the right-hand man of Fidel Castro in Cuba in the witchcraft world. And he was my godfather in the demonic world. Okay? So you, you come here with your little black nails and black little outfit and, you know, a little cross upside down. You're nobody. You're going to do nothing here because you can't beat God. You can't beat God. God knows your thought before you think him. You have to plan with the devil. God knows everything before you even think it or dream it. So I did the witchcraft for, from New York City to Haiti, from Haiti to Cuba, Miami, and back to New York. I was hanging out with people that, that, that were celebra- people that were connecting with Mark Anthony, Jennifer Lopez, just a bunch of witches from Miami. I was hanging out with those people in India, all the people that were doing. I went to the clubs in New York City. We used to do the demonic handshake. And in India, I was up there singing with Mark Anthony. They would do the demonic handshake back to me. I did it all. So you can't come here. I've been sold out for Jesus. I'm not a seller. I'm sold out for Christ. I'm doing life. No parole. I'm on death row. Let that be your story. I hear people saying, well, the witch is at work and she tormented me. I torment you back with prayer. And I, and I pray you ask to break. I dare you to ask to project to my house. I'll cancel your assignment. I'll make sure you don't get back to your body. You tell me what color you want your roses when I send it to your funeral. And, oh, but you're a Christian. You're supposed to pray. No, I'm doing, I tell you, you, wanna, you, want, you, want, you, want, you want me to pray for you and you want to humble yourself? And then I'll give you John 3, 16. But if you want to come, you want to get froggy with me, I'll give you Psalm 91. I'll open up a can of whipping, you'll regret it. <laughs> and if I'm with Jesus and he blessed me, you can't curse me. I, as a matter of fact, I write your recipe from the old days. I had a book, a demonic book. Only three people in the world had it. Three people in the world with symbolic symbols of the devil himself. Chago had it. Uh, one that Dios had it, this other Dominican man, he was high up there with the Chaco, and I had it. And this other kid had it. In the demonic world, that I used to take demonic symbols from there. It was like a Ouija board. Take the demonic symbol from there and put it on you and curse you and give you premature death and give you cancer. I was the third person in the planet, of, in the world, that had that book. Written by the devil himself. And you're going to come in here and thinking you all that in a bag of chips? You must be crazy. Human bones, calavera, calavera. I had that. You know, you know, you know. When I went to demon parties and people manifested with, with demons in them, you know what the demons used to say when they come down? The language they spoke. That's how deep I was. They said "Salam aleikum," and you said "Maleikum sala." Who says that? The Muslims. You sit and talk to the devil all night long, 
and cut yourself and put the cross upside down and let them put an ox here and cut yourself upside down and bleed with 17 people in the basement and almost bleed to death to sign your blood to the devil and sign your contract so he can accept you and change your name like in the book of Daniel. Change your name to another name, to a different identity, to a different person. And you come here, you tell me you're a devil worshiper. Come, go sleep in the cemetery. Go lay yourself in a tomb. I hear Christians today laying themselves in a tomb, a Captain Kuhlman's tomb. They lay themselves in tombs. I'm like, you, all you're picking up is demon because Captain Kuhlman is not even there. I want her anointing. Yeah, you're taking a familiar spirit with you to your house. And you're going to take that demonic anointing to your house. And you're going to operate under that demonic anointing. And you prostituted what God has for you. And you're going to operate under that demonic anointing. Thinking that because you lay her tomb, that Captain Kuhl, you got Captain Kuhlman's anointing. Oh, baby, I know Christian witchcraft, and I know Julio's witch. I know Julio again. Sorry, Julio. <laughs> Keep saying Julio. Amen. Amen. I, I'm, I'm just warming up, baby. See, the, the devil's game is to get you to the corner. The devil's game is for you to get to the edge of your promised land and lose everything. Moses saw the promised land from afar and died. And Moses is in heaven, by the way, because I can prove it to you. It's a New Testament. Who came down in the, mount, in the mountain? Elijah. Moses was the law. Elijah was the prophets. So Moses made heaven. But I'm talking about the promised land, the purpose and the destiny that God has for you. You know what's sad about a mother? We have a lot of awesome mothers here. The sad thing about a mother is to die with her baby inside. And the sad thing about a Christian is to die with your purpose and your destiny inside. And this Christian going home before time because God don't want you to lose your salvation. And God is taking you home because you're not going to fulfill the purpose and the destiny he got you. So you have to take him home prematurely. And then there's a, place in, and there's a place in heaven that's called the projects. You'll be living there. <laughs> yep. You won't get manna, but you'll get government cheese. <laughs> and that part of heaven. With me? Listen, tonight, tonight, do you have the courage? In other words, do you have the faith? Tonight, do you have the courage? Do you have the faith? To act out, with, listen, to act outwardly what God put inside of you. Do you have the courage? The courage in the kingdom is faith. And faith is the currency of the kingdom. David had the courage. The saints of old had courage to have faith to finish the race. Do you have the courage? Do you have the courage to act out? What God showing you inwardly, do you have the courage to live out your purpose and your destiny that's inside of you? Do you have the faith? Listen to the words. I'm talking to somebody tonight. You've been asking God, where am I going to all this? Where am I going to all this? God is saying, I'm putting you in the process. So you could what? Go through what is necessary to be tough. That means to trust him and not to stand where he's taking you. The process is to prove your heart. Are you with him or are you against him? It's to purge you from yourself. Is to burn out all the things that are in you, the residue that is in you in the process from the past, old mindsets. You with me? Rome modus. The process is to prove who you are in him. How could you know that you walk in him if you haven't been tested? How you know he lives in you if you haven't been proven? God is using the process to kill your unbelief. Faith and unbelief cannot coincide 
in the same mindset. To prepare your heart. The process makes you tenacious. The process makes you relentless. It gives you tenacity to face your Goliath. You need a process. You need a Goliath in your life. David needed a Goliath in his life. A life without Goliath, you listen, I'm talking to David's. A life without Goliath, David, you will always be a shepherd boy. A Goliath tells that you've been with God. A Goliath will say that you have arrived. David was doing overeat. Was he? <laughs> That's the message Bible. David was doing overeat. Dropping lunch off to his brother when he came across his Goliath. You with me? Needed, he needed a Goliath in his life. You need to... Without the process, you never see Jesus. You with me? Without the process, you never see Jesus. Without Jesus going to the process and going to the cross, he would never would really see you and I. The mission of Christ was to go to the cross. He destroyed. He, he pulverized the devil at the cross. He disarmed the kingdom of darkness like nothing. How could you be a devil worshiper when you're in the losing side? What are you betting on? What are you hoping on? What does your tomorrow look like? You know how many devil worshippers are in hell today? Plenty. Like I told you earlier. A minute too late to repent. So, 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 so the devil. Maybe I tell the devil tonight. Listen to me, devil. Get out the way. I'll run you over. Because I'm going through the process, and I'm going to get to the other side. Listen, listen, the process is this. They got a teaching on this. I mean, not the one, I just want to show you something. The process is this. Let me show you the process. This is the process, the before, and when you get to the process, the cross. Then Jesus is on this side, the after. I don't know about you. I've been through many processes in my life before I do the altar call. Process of bankruptcy because I did the Ponzi Christians did a Ponzi scheme on me. Ponzi, I went to welfare to get food stamps to eat because I didn't have no money. Been there. I've been through that. My brother called me up. My brother did 15 years in jail. My brother knows the Latin Kings. He knows the blood, the cribs. He knows MS-13. He's been in jail for 15 years. My brother called me up and said, yeah, you want me to go get those pastors and beat them down and put them on the phone so you can hear them scream? That sounded like a good idea. I was looking for a scripture. Vengeance is the Lord. He's going to send my brother. My brother's going to be like David, going to bring down the Goliath. And the Lord said to me, if I've forgiven you much, then you forgive them. And I forgave them, let them go. A few months ago, we, uh, last year, was the day, a few months, uh, a few months ago, I'm walking down Manhattan. And the, I was going to go get some jail because I'm proud of my hair. Just me. And when I was walking down, the Lord said, don't go into the pharmacy. Don't get nothing. Keep walking. See, that's the sermon. That's to know the voice of God. I don't have to fast to know the voice of God. 
I fast when the Lord told me to fast because he's going to increase me somewhere. I don't fast to know the voice of God. I don't need to fast. So I kept walking, and some guy came up to me and said, hey, John, what's up? What's up, John, from a distance? So he came close. I know who he was. He said, I want to ask for forgiveness for the things I did to you. I said, you've been forgiven a long time ago. He said, I heard you going to, I heard you going to Atlanta to, to, to do a preach. I said, yeah. He said, you think me and my pastor, the pastor's son can go with you? I said, sure, you can go. And you know what the Lord said to me? Pay for his hotel. Bless those that I paid for his hotel. He came to Atlanta. You know what was his last words when we left? He said, you truly are a general for Jesus Christ. <laughs> See? See how good God is? And I ate pizza more than Italian in New York City for three and a half years. Thank God that pizza in New York City is delicious. Uh, that pizza in New York City is off the, yeah, there you go, big time. You can't get better pizza in New York City. That dirty water gives it a good flavor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for my Chinese people. That pork fried rice, those four chicken wings, brother. That egg foo young, that shrimp fried rice, brother. That fried rice, they give it like a mountain for five bucks. And them chicken wings, they look like they're on steroids. I'm thinking about this big. They, they had to staple the, the styrofoam to fit it in there. I ate three and a half years of that, but I never starved. Because God is good. God provided. And then when I went to welfare, I filled out my application. The first person they called was Michael Jackson. I said, I'm in good company. Michael's here. He, I think he's in heaven. All right. Just me. I'm a Michael Jackson fan. I'm a Michael Jackson fan, and I love Prince. That's just me. You'd be surprised when you get to heaven. You're going to be like, oh, my God, you made it. <laughs> you with me? Because you don't know the last moment. Who repented? We know the moment, but we don't know the big picture. Understand? We know, we know the parts. God knows things in whole. God's seen everybody's funeral already. We all dead in the eyes of God. And we are alive here. Because God thinks God sees things as whole. Oh, you see what's now, God sees what's tomorrow. You with me? We see things in parts. God sees things in whole. We like, we like, we like this person, tomorrow we don't like him. We like this job, tomorrow we don't like this job. You love your wife today, and tomorrow you're like, oh, God. <laughs> Same thing with the husband. You wake up, man, you look at your husband, like, oh, God, I should have married Julio. <laughs> and some of you are like, I'm single, I want a man. I want a man, I'm single. And the lady next to you is saying, you can take my husband, baby. <laughs> Free! Because <laughs> that's, that's how we live. You with me? That's how we live. But, you know, tonight, he said, Lord, I want to walk through the process. It's every hindering, delay, and blockages and distractions. I want to walk through it. Because the Pharaoh I see today, I'm going to give him an eviction notice. I'm not going to pray it out. Don't pray things off. Pray things through. This church teach you how to pray things through. They don't teach you how to pray things off. You ever, you ever went to college? Who went, who went to college here? I did. I just went for the money. <laughs> they give you the Pell de Grant. I took them two checks. I was out. I cashed them, made sure they don't come back and get them. I was out. In college, if you don't finish the course, what they give you? Come on, my college people, what they give you? Huh? Incomplete. I think y'all didn't go to college. I think you went on that <laughs> online crap course. They give you an incomplete. So why would you pray something out of you? When I mean pray something out of you, or pray, if you go into a trial, why do you want to pray it off to get it incomplete in heaven? Pray through. 
So when you get to the side, you'll be the, you'll be a different believer. You'll be a different Christian, and that and that and that gray will be on your report card in heaven. And God can take you to the next class because the class are the steps that you take until you get to the platform, which is heaven. But in the between, step, 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 step. The devil is there because he's trying to trip you up. You with me? So, before, I'm going to ask you a question before we get into, like, I feel like we also need to come to a place. If you're lukewarm tonight, you need to come back to God's perfect will. Lukewarm Christian don't make heaven. The Bible says he spits you out. Lukewarm Christians don't, don't get to heaven. God said he spits you out. You know how many lukewarm Christians are in hell today? Many are in hell today. Because they had social media first, the TV was first, and the devil is eating your time. And the Bible says, redeem your time, the days are evil. And we, 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 are, we, are, we are compromising and negotiating with the devil. And you don't have to be a witch doctor to do, to negotiate with the devil. Because the devil will make you so busy that you don't have time for the Lord. The devil will make you so busy that he'll rob you from your time with the Lord. I've been there. I can raise my hand. I've been robbed. There have been seasons in my life that the devil has robbed me. And it brings hindering, delay, and blockages and distortion into my life. And what, I, and what God had for me that year, I missed it. Because it wasn't the year, the year needed to change. I needed to change. Because a lot of times we get worldly. We're like, oh, the year going to change, and I'm going to have New Year resolutions. I'm not going to eat no more hot dogs. You go to New York City, you eat papaya. You won't quit on them. They don't papayas in New York City, brother. They're like manna. You will not say no. Believe that. And I'm saying, and we say these things, but we can't keep promises. We can only keep the promises to Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And you need to make an assessment how you want to finish your year. Because the devil worshipers in October and December are the high season of the witch world, witchcraft world, to finish the year strong. How much more we supposed to finish the year strong? So when you get to when you get to January 1st, 2024, you'll be a different believer than 2023. But see, the devil wants you to go back to 2023, 2022, 2021. He wants you to be that old Christian, stagnated in nothing but a stench. You know why? Because I leave you with this. Noah took the dove, right? He I don't know how to, I'm Puerto Rican. I have an accent. The dove, whatever you call it. The bird, whatever. <laughs> the dove. He took the dove out, right? The dove. Okay. The, he took the dove. Thank you, Pastor. I'm coming, to the, I'm coming here to the bilingual class. The dove. <laughs> represent, the dove represents the Holy Spirit. There you go. I got it right. I'm not going to say anymore because I don't want to mess it up. The, <laughs> he put it out, right? Why Noah put it? Why Noah put it? Came back. It represents the Holy Spirit, correct? Holy Spirit is sensitive. The reason it came back because that dove was not going to land on dead corpse, and the Holy Spirit is not going to land anywhere in your life that smells like Ishmael, because God is looking for the aroma of heaven on you, not a stench of the world, of compromising. Or playing patty pat with the devil. So when you come to the altar today, it's about saying, Lord, I'm going to strip myself from what's bringing hindering, delay, and blockages from you touching my life in the areas that I need to be touched. Because if you touch me, you can make all things whole. And I can go to the process and get to the other side and make you proud that you picked me. Yeah. With me? So far? I'm, am I preaching good? Amen. All right, praise the Lord. I got, I got my bodyguard here. So let me ask you a question. Right? Everybody has a Christian? 
a Christian Dior. You're Christians? How long have you been Christians? Three years. Three years? No devil worshiping you? You sure? You didn't come looking for me? I'm, I'm going to set it off on both of you. <laughs> Just so you know. You look like Jesus a little bit. I think I've seen you before. The anointing on you? I will find out later if you're anointing because I'll let you know what time it is. <laughs> but you, have, you know, God, if you turn and go deeper with God, you're going to be two great evangelists. And when you leave the world, people will miss you. With me? You've been to my meetings before? No. Never? You got duplicates, bro. <laughs> and some guys. All right? So we, I'm going to pray for both of you. You with me? You want that? Yeah. All right. Just checking. You know, I'm not afraid of ghosts. <laughs> now, this is cool. We, we got rumble here. We got LA hats, we got socks, side, we got Yankee hats. I'm a Yankee fan. My mom was so broke when she took when they sent me to the old Yankee Stadium. By the time we got up to the high by the by the lights, the pretzel lights, it was like the seventh inning. <laughs> we climbed, it was like climbing Mount Everest to the top of the old Yankee Stadium. You could see the whole Bronx from up there. And then we went under the lights, so we felt like pretzels, me and my brothers. But my mom was my hero. My mom is my hero. Mom, there's nothing, the closest thing to the Lord Jesus Christ is an amazing mother. And one thing, let me share, I'm not going to leave the brothers out. One great thing about a man is to be a father. So if you're a father here and you're far away from your son or your daughter, and you're not giving them what belongs to them. Before the years are, make right. Do the right thing. Even if you drop a 20 and you don't have much, you drop a 20. But at least God would notify that. And God would, God would testify to that. And God would increase you. My daughter's 33. Right? And we never had the best relationship because I was so much in the demonic that was more important. The devil was more important to me at the time than my daughter. And God restored my relationship with my daughter years later. And my daughter is 33. My daughter makes about $75,000 a year. I still pay half of her rent every month. Because I, I want her to remember me as a good dad when I leave the earth. And if you mess with my daughter, I, I'll cut you. <laughs> and I'll repent later. <laughs> I, will, I will open up a can of whipping on you. You mess with my daughter. I remember one time, my daughter, years ago, my daughter called me up, and my daughter said, Dad, I, I, I broke up with this dude, and he's harassing me. He's uh, harassing me, and he's uh, telling me bad things. Because, you know, people stalk and people kill, right? Right? I called that brother up. I told him, you listen to me, you mother. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what time it is. I'm going to go to your house, kill your cat. I'm going to kill your dog. I'm going to drown your, I'm gonna drown your goldfish. I'm going to beat you like a piñata in a Mexican party. <laughs> Candy come out of your pockets. Wait till I get up there. You mess with my daughter. He said, I thought you were a Christian. I said, not right now. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not right now. Not right now. I said, I said, I said, I, I was like Tony Montana. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. That's how crazy I was. But you know why I tell you this story? Because that's the way God feels about you when the devil messes with you. When the devil messes with you, Gabriel, Michael, strap up. We got to take care of business. We're going, to the, we're going to the barrio. We're going to the neighborhood. The Lord said, I'm going down there. I'm going to let that devil know what time it is. You mess with my kids, I mess you up. That's the John Ramirez translation. That's how God feels about you because God is jealous about you. So why are you playing dirt? Why are you playing home dirty? For Halloween, you play home dirty with chunk of tree. 
You're playing him dirty with Instagram. You're playing him dirty. Facebook, social media, the one night monster television in your house. Tengo que ver la novela. Cállate la boca. Holy Spirit, don't speak to me for an hour. I got to watch the soap operas. I don't know what's going to happen to Julio in the novela today. Julio, I love you. And you know what happens? And I leave you with this. Do you know David Wilkinson? He mentored me for three years. You know David Wilkinson? He had, I had the opportunity to be blessed by that man. Amen. Lay hands on me, pray over me. You know David Wilkinson? His ministry started because the Lord, he told the Lord, if, if this is Christianity, I don't want it anymore because it was dead and dry. He belonged to the Assembly of God's Church somewhere in Pennsylvania. He came from a line of preachers, and he was bored with religion. And the Lord said to him, if you, if, you, if you get rid of your TV and give me the time of your television, I can use you. And he told his wife, Gwen, listen, I'm helping you out because there's some things you got to get rid of so God can use you. So he told, he told his wife, the Lord says, sell the TV. So I told the Lord, 6 o'clock today, if no one shows up, then I didn't hear from him. 11.59, someone showed with 100 bucks to buy the TV. And then he opened, he opened Life, uh, Life, Lifetime magazine. He opened it up, and there was a murder trial in 1958 that seven gang members killed this handicapped guy. And God said, go to New York and preach to the gangs. And he went to New York, almost got arrested. Nikki Cruz pulled a knife on him, was going to cut him, spit him in the face, punch him, slap, slap him in the face. And because that man crossed over from Pennsylvania to New York City, we got Nikki Cruz today as one of the greatest evangelists of our time. We got, an, we got another brother from, Calif from New York City, California, Sony Agonzoni, Victory Outreach. All because a man put away something that was hindering him from God to use him. You know, David Wilkerson was such a man of prayer. Let me, let me tell you. I'm, I got time, right? He was a man of prayer. His wife had cancer 28 times. And he prayed cancer off for her 28 times. A man of prayer. Let me, let me just share this moment with you. Let me, what's, I, I got time, right? Yeah. Let me share this moment with you, right? Because when you're at the club, you didn't worry about time. You were drunk. <laughs> uh, yeah, but then we're going to be drunk in the spirit. So, so, so David, listen. Let me, I'll share one story, and then I'll share, show you the power of prayer. A true story. Who knows Charles Spurgeon? It's Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon was in London. In downtown London, I think in the 1800s. And the Lord spoke to Charles and said, get a building for the orphanage people, for the orphans downtown. We want to, I want you to do an orphanage. The power of prayer. That's why the devil don't want you to pray. The devil wants you to come to church, which is good. The devil wants you to have five translations. You don't read one. <laughs> you rather watch the Lord. You got the little devotional book, and you think that's your prayer life. You watch some crazy pastor on YouTube, and you think that's your church. Charles Spurgeon, when he went downtown looking for a building, this is a true testimony. He went downtown. He saw a building. He said, oh, my, this is the Lord. said, that's the one. He said that. He walked in. The real estate guy was in there. That's what we call real estate in our country, but I don't know what they call them over there. The real estate guy was there. He said, how much you want for this building? The man, I'm just going to give you a number just to show what the man said. Well, we want $500,000 for this building. And so as Charles Spurgeon said, well, I'll give you $50,000. I'll give you $50,000 for your building. The man said, you crazy? What's wrong with you? Get out of the building. You don't even $50,000 you won't give me for the building. Didn't I tell you $500,000 for this building? 
and I'm representing the owner of the building for it's five hundred thousand dollars. What would you what would you be crazy enough to make an offer fifty thousand dollars? Please, sir, leave. He said, before I leave, I'll leave you my business card. He left the business card. A couple hours later, the owner of the building came into the building and saw the real estate guy. He said, hey, uh, anybody, anybody may offers in my building. He said, sir, no one today. Just one crazy guy came. And I'm not even going to tell you how much you offer for the building because if I tell you, you, it, you'll be upset. And he said, he left his business card. So the guy said, give me the card. Gave him the card. He looked at it. He said, Charles Spurgeon. He said, Charles here? The real the, the Charles Spurgeon, the real, the real Charles Spurgeon was in my building. The man said, yeah, he was here. It was stupid. The guy was crazy. I think he was from wrong with him. He offered $50,000. The man said, do me a favor. Go get the 50. Go get it now. Because if that man pray, he'll get the building for free. <laughs> <laughs> Go get my $50,000. Because if he prays, he'll get it for free. Let your life be known because you live under the anointing, the power of prayer. I said one more true story to you. There was a very famous Hollywood actor slash documentary guy in in New York City, and I finished with this, we'll come up for the altar. He was there. He had an iconic voice, sexy voice, like mine, it's Puerto Rican. <laughs> and he was, he, he did documentaries and he did movies. He was known for his voice. You with me? In that place, they had a gathering in New York City, and all these fans came to hear him quote parts of movies and documentaries. And somehow, that night, some pastor came in, and he sat down with the audience. So the people raising their hands said, quote this part of the documentary. And he would quote him, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, standing ovation. People, you know, everybody peeing their pants. All that was going on. And, the act, and, and somehow, uh, the pastor raised his hand, and the actor pointed him out and said, what part of the movie you want me to quote? What part of the documentary you want me to say for you, sir? He said, no, I just want you to quote Psalms 23 for me. And the actor smiled and laughed. He said, I can do that. He said, one condition. After I do it, you do it afterwards. And the man, the pastor with the broken voice, with the Kermit, the frog voice, said, from years of preaching, he said, ah, okay, okay, sir. We got a deal. So the actor got up there. He sounded like Carnegie Hall. Quoting Psalm 23 from beginning to end, the Lord is my shepherd. And he quoted. And then the pastor got up with his rinky dinky voice. And when the when that man, when that man finished, when when the actor finished quoting Psalms 23, man, the place wanted to fall. I mean, people were standing, cheering, bravo, bravo. Then when the place went berserk. Now the pastor got up, it was his turn to quote Psalms 23. And he got up with his little Kermit the Frog voice, beat up voice, scratchy voice. The Lord is my shepherd. He went down the line of Psalms 23. And in the end, he finished. There was no standing ovation. But everybody in that place couldn't hold back the tears. And the, and the reporter came up to the actor and said, what happened? What happened? What happened? And the actor looked back and smiled. He said, I knew the words, but he knew the God of the word. So it's not just enough to know the word. You need to know the God of the word. See, David, Psalms 23 is a spiritual warfare psalm. Let me just give you one more thing and we'll pray. Psalms 23 is a spiritual war psalm. We quote Psalm 91, spiritual warfare, yeah, but Psalms 23, this is what David said. I'm going to give you Psalms 23 tomorrow, the definition. I'm going to see if I break it down tomorrow. I'll just give you one part. When David said, the Lord is my shepherd, he was telling the devil, I'm in relationship with him. See that? 
When you establish yourself in the fight, in the spiritual warfare fight, you have to let the devil know, I'm in relationship with heaven. I'm not here by myself, baby. Don't get it twisted. You might see me by myself, but look deep in the spirit. I'm, the Lord is my shepherd. That means I'm in relationship with him. Nothing missing, nothing broken. So devil, whatever you bring my way, you are not going to accomplish anything. And I'm going to break down Psalm 23 tomorrow from beginning to end and break it down to you to prove to you that Psalm 23 is an awesome spiritual warfare psalm. So my altar call is simple. I'm going to put this over there because so many Puerto Ricans in the house. Can't trust them, baby. They might sell my stuff on eBay. Can't trust those Puerto Rican people. I'll be, I'll be buying my own iPad on eBay. And people, you know, people are crazy. They're like, oh, I found this. Or I got, the Lord blessed you with it. You stole it. Yeah, ain't going to bless you with it. Crazy. Everybody, you know, God was testing you. And you felt the test. One day I went, I went into P.C. Richards, and I was broke like a skunk. And I left $100 on this TV. And I was, I mean, it was like, remember back in the day, the biggest TV was like 55-inch plasma. Right? It was like the biggest one back in the days. I had one on layaway. I was drooling for that TV. But I didn't have money to get it out. So I went back to P.C. Richards, and I told the lady in the front, hey, you know, I'm sorry. I don't have money to get the TV out. Could I get my $100 back? She said, yeah. You can. She said, sure. You know, we get refunds. I said, okay. That's back in the day, you used to get refunds. You know how old that is. So I give her I give the receipt. I'm walking out the store. I have $400 in my hand. Now I'm broke. $400, like, to me, is like $4,000. And I have my hands. I could have said, wow, God bless me. He multiplied my $100. No. I said, I came back. I said, ma'am, uh, I don't know, but you gave me $300 extra. Here's your money back. I'm a Christian. Here's your money back. You know what she said to me? I'm a single mother. If you didn't come back, I would have lost my job today. God was testing me. Because see, another Christian would say, oh, God bless me. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> Jehovah Jireh. They would have walked out with the 400. And you fell the test because you was a thief. And God was testing you to find out what's your integrity and your godly character. Come on. And I gave back the money. That's how serious things are. One time I was driving in New York, and you know how the, the police people, and I was, I, I, I'm a whacked out Christian. I'm driving down New York, and the, and the, and the people, the, the direct traffic, the worst people in New York City, they got the worst job. I, I mean, I couldn't be one of those guys. And the lady said, go that way. I said, no, but I got to go this way. She said, go that way. And I give it a finger. I, I have to be honest. I give it a finger. I caught, a, I caught an ungodly moment. I went, oh, you. And the Lord convicted me. I went all the way around. It took 50 minutes to go around to say sorry to her. 50 minutes. 50 minutes around. God didn't let me go until I went all the way around and said sorry. To her. You see, I'm not perfect, but I want to be genuine for the Lord. I make mistakes. I do crazy stuff. I say crazy things sometimes. But I know I live, know how to live, and throw myself in the mercy of the court and ask God for forgiveness. So I'm saying, I'm, well, I'm saying this to you. I'm putting myself on the line to don't, so you don't be embarrassed and not want to come up. Or be ashamed or feel guilty because you want to be a super Christian. You want to ask on your chest in red boots. There's no super Christian. Even the one that you be a freaky Freddy. They got one pass on television. He go to, his church is down in Atlanta. He gave permission to his deacons to grow marijuana. Think about it. It's one, thing, it's one thing to make a mistake and God forgives you. It's another thing to live a lifestyle. That you can't be forgiven for a lifestyle. It, it, it's like another pass on TV. 
he did uh, the Resurrection Sunday. He threw, a, he threw a crazy club party up on the stage. But he's saying, he's saying, well, I don't know how to do this. That's bull crap. Hogwash. You know the word. He's he making the homosexual people in his church feel comfortable. He said, oh, this is what we call the church for information church because, you know. It's debauchery in the house of God. It's like when Jesus came and turned the tables over. Why did he turn the tables over? Because there was debauchery in the house of God when he said, my father's house should be a house of prayer. And we're doing it today. And if Jesus were to come down to your church, well, he turned the tables over your house. Lazarus died. The two crazy sisters, they were Puerto Rican. You know their story. <laughs> right? That's my Bible say that. The John Ramirez translation. I'll be out next year. And what they do to the Son of God? See, when everything happy times, everything is good. I'm a Christian. He's my Jesus. But when the threat hits your house, you turn on him by doing accusations, putting the Son of God in tr on trial. Where were you? My brother died because of you. If you would have been here, my brother would have been healed. If you would have been here, my brother would have never died. An accusation spirit. And Jesus wept. Is Jesus weeping over you or he's rejoicing over you? That is my altar call. Is Jesus weeping over you or he's rejoicing over you? Are you making Jesus Christ proud that he picked you? But you find a good fight, or Jesus regret saving you because you are compromising and you have more trust in the devil than believing God. Which is what, what is are you the army? Are you the bride? Are you the body? Are you the form? Are you on the love boat? The love boat was racist, they only had one black people. Isaac. The bartender. Racist. So you're on the low boat or you're on the battleship? See, this is a battleship church. This is a battleship church. I don't say that because I'm here. Because I've been to some churches. I've been to some churches that I preach. I'm like, I'm like Lord, help them. Lukewarm to the max. Lukewarm to the max churches. I've been preaching those churches and, I, and the pastor called me. I said, yeah, your church is local home. Listen, I'd rather tell you the truth and you be mad at me and you make heaven. I'll tell you the truth. You be, I, I, when people tell me the truth, sometimes people tell me, I have, I have great men of God that come up to me and say, John, you know, you, 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 you're crazy. Uh, you know, you need to, you know, because I used to go to church and, and when I was younger, I would sit with my legs open. I would wear two earrings. I would wear a hole in the pants. And I would sit there like, you know, like I was sitting at, at the club. And I would say, well, I'm a work in progress. I'm human. That was my, that was my MO. And you know what God said to me one day? God said, well, I can never use you if you, don't be ch if you don't let me change you. So I started to dress up. I started to look like a real believer in the inside and the outside. Because I, I was still two years, I was still go get my Coronas. Ain't gonna lie, the best beer in the world. Thank you, Mexican people. <laughs> Paul to my Mexican people. <laughs> See, I tell the truth, right? But you don't dare tell the truth about you. Because you, you don't want people to know your dirt. And the only person that can clean your dirt is Jesus. So let's do the altar call. My altar call is simple. Simple. My altar call is simple. Who you need to let go. I got Christian sisters saying my husband is Muslim. I said, how did I end up with that loco? With that said loco? I mean, I'm not a Muslim, but, you know, I'm not going to be on even a yoke. I'm yoke right now with, with my wife and everything. My wife is a hottie. My wife is Asian. She don't get wrinkles. My wife is 48. You look at her, you think she's 38. 
you know, just, you know, I was like, Lord, thank you. Because when I first came to church, oh, my God, when I first came to church, let me, pray, let me talk to you. When I first came to church, I was like, Lord, save some good-looking women. They were all ugly. <laughs> ugly women to the max. I was like, Lord, to save some strippers. No makeup, no nothing, hair pushed back. It looked like your <laughs> lines on your forehead, hair pushed back. No perfume on you. You dressed with raggedy and clothes, and that was holy. Oh, that's religious. You know how you Spanish people do it? My Spanish people, hola, santo, hallelujah, amen. Yo soy, yo soy pastor de la iglesia de Pedro González, Juan Ramírez, Julio, Potiza. And you and, and you sitting there on religion and going to hell. And the girls are ugly as a, as a dog. No makeup, no nothing. Don't brush your hair. Don't brush your teeth. Nothing. Hairs in their legs. You're like, I mean, what time zone you came out of, baby? Let me take you to get your makeup. Let me, let me get your makeover or something. <laughs> ugly as crap. And then, guys, you see the other guys with a played out crazy Two size too big, suit on them. It's a polyester. You put a match, you turn on fire. <laughs> and they call that holy. I pray, I said, Lord, my Lord save my wife. My wife was a Buddhist. I said, bring her. Yeah, get, the, get that Buddha fat devil out of her. And, and mm, <laughs> get that crap out of her. Polish her up. Because she's good looking. That's it. There is, amen. You see her. Am, am I telling you the truth? You, you, you go to that Pentecostal legalistic church? Amen. ¿Verdad? La verdad. Hay uno, uno diablo ahí. Eso no sirve. Eso no sirve. Uno diablo ahí. I remember they threw me out of a church in New York City in my, in my second year as a Christian. They told me, come give your testimony. And I finished with this. I went to give my testimony. It's one of these hallelujah crazy Puerto Rican churches. So I went over there to give my testimony. And I sat right there. And, and some guy sat with this crazy polyester suit. I almost called a rash looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> that thing had so much brillo on it. He looked like a shark. <laughs> Sitting there. And the, and the pastor come on and say, Mano, Dios te bendiga, santo, hallelujah, esta noche. Tu vas a dar tu testimonio. Told the guy. And the guy said, no, it's not me, pastor. It's him. He looked at me. I was dressed like this. He looked at me like, and then I had a watch, and I had a chain on with you know, the cross and everything. He looked at me like, so I said, so okay. He went to the back. He got two goombas. He got Fred and Bonnie. He took me to the back. He said, come back. I need to talk to him. I went to the back. And I thought he was going to talk to me about protocol, how many times I had. Only eight people in the church. Eight, 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 eight cats in the church. That's what he had. And he had 400 Puerto Ricans going to hell outside the church, running up and down the neighborhood. 400 people outside. He had eight cats in the church. And, and he told me, come. Uh, he said, come. He said, let me talk to you in the back. When I went to the back, he said, you need to leave my church. I said, why? He said, you worldly. So early, do I got baptized and saved two years ago? What do you mean, worldly? <laughs> what are you talking about? You didn't see my resume? I was baptized and, and accepted Jesus two years ago. He said, you got a watch on and you got a cross on. Get out of my church. Threw me out. Escorted me out with two goombas. They escorted me, threw me out. I got, I went, I got some pork fries, some chicken wings. I went home. <laughs> Legalism will kill you. Will separate you from the cross. Judgmental will kill you and separate you from the cross. Judging will kill you and separate you from the cross. Unforgiveness will take you to hell. Lukewarmness, God will spit you back out. Compromising in the church today, not a dime a dozen, you won't get to heaven. God gives grace to genuine believers, but he judge people that's playing with fire.
I'm not perfect, I told you, but I'm a genuine believer. You know, you know I said this last, last this year, God opened. I said, Lord, can I get back on TV? I haven't been on TV, I haven't been on a TV show in about two or three years. About two or three years. I been, maybe say three years. I haven't been on a TV show. I said, Lord, can I get back on TV? The Lord called, touched Madeline Hickey. 93 years old, I just did two shows of her. God touched Daystar, Joni, Joni Lamb, touched her. She called me up. I'm doing two shows of her. God touched Jim Baker, which I, first time I'm going to do two shows with him. I'm going back on TV with Jim Baker to do two shows. These are major platform in the Christian world. God is bringing me back on television to do shows. Amen. And, and I got one more thing. I got one more thing. Go to show how God works when you're genuine. See, you can make a mistake, and grace will cover that. But get back up. Let me tell you one more thing God's doing for me. And, and, and again, this, I want you to say, God no respect a person. That's what I'm trying to teach you. God can do it for you. Listen, I got a high school diploma. That's like toilet paper. It can blow your nose with it. But I've written eight books. Don't know how. By the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Eight books. I want you to catch this. I'm getting, in, in God willing, in Jesus' name, I'm getting a doctorate degree from the University of Light Christian University by Dr. Wingate that uh, Crefo, Joyce Myers, uh, Benny Hinn, uh, Kenneth Clopin got the degree from there. I'm getting a doctorate degree based on my books and my ministry and the e-courses and everything that God has done, been sized up by the University of Life Christian University. They're giving me a doctor's degree in, in, in July. And they're giving me, amen? They're giving me, and I'm going to tell you, let me just say one more thing. And they're giving me a bachelor's degree as well. And they, and they are also ordaining me as well. No, I want you to catch this. This is, this is what I'm saying this to you. It's not about, that's a prepay, turn it off. <laughs> I'm saying to you this, this is what I'm saying to you. You're not defined by your DNA, your nationality, your culture, or your neighborhood. You're a child of heaven. All you have to do is give God back the pen of your story. That's what you have to do tonight. Lord, I give you back the pen of my story. My father was a drunk. My mother was beat up. We had government cheese. We had welfare. That was my dad. Full stamp was my dad for years. But it's not where you start. It's where you want to finish. Look all what God has done. And if when, once all those, all those things come to my life, i still be John Ramirez. i still be the donkey that was tied up. I, still, I go everywhere. I, I get stopped everywhere. I take pictures. I talk to people. I shake people's hand because I am grateful for the moments and the seasons that God has given me because if it wasn't for him, I couldn't shake your hand. So I, 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 am, I, am, I am indebted. I'm in debt to this, to the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen? So my altar call is simple. We can stand up. I want you two to come because God's going to do something special for y'all. Amen? Y'all live together? You hang out together? What do you do together? What do you do? Just you just met? I know you're ministers. I've seen you before. You cast out demons. You cast out demons? I'm famous on the internet. Oh, really? Well, you got to show me your stuff. You got to show me your stuff. <laughs> no, not now. Show me later before okay. you go so I can, uh, <laughs> I can team up with you. Amen. Yeah. Let it go. 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 Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. In the name of Jesus. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. I don't read. Hey, what does that say? Let me see. There you go. Wow. You're on the money. All right. Don't. Yeah. Okay. All right. I read it. No, no, you don't get up there. Stay right there. Because they're mad? Huh? Because they're mad? No. You stay there. Ah, I, I want to help you there. I was down there with you all, all this time. 
Okay? Any, now, my altar call is simple. Listen to me. Listen to me. My, my, Martha, this is beautiful what you wrote, by the way. Listen to me. My altar call is simple. If you feel that you're not saved, you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I want to see your hand lifted up high. Thank you. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Come over here. Come over here. Confess him in person so God will confess you in front of the Father. Jesus will confess you in front of the Father. Come here. Anybody don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just come right on this side. Come. 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 God bless you, my brother. Man, come right there. Right there. Amen. You you with me? This you can't make this mistake. We don't we this this is not how good I am, how many good works I've done. That don't work in heaven. That that doesn't work that way. There's a man that paid a price, and he's adopting you today. Because you you on the you are on the foster care list, and God, heaven wants you. Heaven wants you. Don't worry about it. I got this. Heaven wants you. One. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anyone else that wants Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of their lives? So everybody here is saved, right? Everybody's on fire for Jesus. Because if Jesus will, if Jesus will, no, let me say something. If Jesus were to walk into this door and say, one of you is not making heaven, which one, which one would it be? Because Jesus walked into the Last Supper and said, one of you is going to betray me. And, and, some, and they were saying, is it me, Lord? Is it me? I don't want to get it wrong. If Jesus, not the Pope, not Bishop Flang Flang or Bishop BB or whatever. If Jesus walked in and said, one of you ain't making heaven, which one would it be? Man, this serious moment. Listen, I gave my life to Jesus, everything. I left the clubs. I left the hangouts. I left the beer. I left the women. I left everything behind. I want nothing. I left everything. I left everything to follow him. I left furniture. I gave. I had to get rid of my car. I got rid of all the furniture. I got rid of everything. I, had, I was living in an apartment that was called the gate called Beautiful, so to speak, in the book of Acts, and I was crippled crippled spiritually sitting in an apartment with no furniture nothing to sit on but I had Jesus in that apartment and I would look out the window and I would say did I, did, did, did I make a mistake look I have nothing when I was in the witchcraft I had furniture I had cars I had friends I had liquor I had, I had lounges I had clubs to go to and I'm just sitting looking out a window with no one to, to, to sit with me or, or dine with me or eat with me and then when I went to the church two years almost two years the church didn't fellowship with me because was afraid and I left it all to follow him no money no, no nothing nothing to eat nothing my mother had to buy me a television and I had no money to buy my own TV because all the money came from witchcraft all the money came from rituals and ceremony and, and high, they hired me for witchcraft to put witchcraft on people destroy people's life I got paid and God has given me more today than anything I can ever imagine or think in my life. And I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about relationships, friendships, real people in my life. You know, I, these wonderful people, they love me for who I am. They don't love me because I'm a minister. They love me because I'm a friend. This minister want to hang out with you because you're a minister, but they don't want to hang out with the real person. Sad. The church won't hang out with popular people. How stupid are you? Want to hang out with someone popular? Hang out with Jesus. He's he's more popular than anybody in the planet. Amen. Let's pray. All right. Stay right there. My sister, raise your hands. I'm over here. Raise your hand. Let me help you. Turn around. Raise your hands. Raise your hand. Okay, raise your hands. Let's see how much you're going to see now. Let's see Jesus. Let me help you. Okay, let me help you. Raise your hands. Okay. It's your choice. You want to be free? Let's do it together. Let's fight together. Let's, let's win together. In the name of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, right now, in the name of Jesus, in the 
name of Jesus right now. Right now. And then you have to listen to what I'm helping you with. Say, Lord Jesus, I come today so you can set me free. Whatever tormented me. Okay, well, let's do it, my sister, right now. Talking is not going to solve it. Confronting it will receive it. You will have the victory. Okay? Raise up your hands. Because if you want to want the victory, the victory is yours. That's why God brought you here. God brought you here for your victory. It's up to you. Because God will do his part, but he'll never do yours. Okay, I don't care what you see. I want you to see your victory. Okay, okay. You know what, my sister? You let me let me know when you're ready. Let me know when you're ready. Let me know when you're ready. When you're ready, and then we'll do it. If you're not ready, then I, I'm out here to entertain and give a show. The devil's not taking me that route. Amen. Either God will always do His part, but He'll never do yours. So when you want deliverance, you come up and say, Lord, I'm here. I give you my Isaac. I surrender all to have it all. So I do so I, I do my part. Some two hands. Do put up a hand, my brother. Touch and agree. There's heaven in you, and you'll be free. So let's raise your hands right here. Huh? No, I'm doing I'm doing right now. I'm just doing receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Then we're going to do deliverance after my brother. Don't go far. Stay right there. So right now, say, Lord Jesus, I come today. People, listen. This is a truth. This is a moment. If you look warm, repeat the prayer too. Because if you look warm and you're out of God's perfect will because you're entertaining, you're compromising, and you're playing around with other things, and Jesus is like tenth on your list, and then one time you was married to him and now you're dating him, and Jesus don't date and you know what you know what the lukewarm Christian is a lukewarm Christian is this a lukewarm Christian is a person that knows Jesus but he's not excited about him anymore okay that's a lukewarm Christian I know him but I'm not excited about him anymore and if that's your life that you know him but you're not excited about him anymore then that's a lukewarm Christian I've been there believe me I ain't gonna lie to you I'm not ashamed to tell you about my dirt but God has put me on fire and I'm on fire for him and I continue to be on fire for him and I continue to walk with him and pressing on and pressing on and pressing on. And listen, I was in New York. I got already three shots in my eye. God can heal me in a minute, but if he wants to do that and I got to go back on May 8th to get another shot, the needle goes right through and it pulls right back out. I do it. And what I'm saying with that is whatever it takes to walk on him, whatever I have to accomplish, whatever I have to do, whatever I have to do to walk on him. If it's dirt to eat, I eat dirt. If he tells me to do this, I do this. I want to make sure because the fear of the Lord is saying one thing. I don't want to disappoint him. With me? So if you look warm, then you repeat this prayer. Because if you look at the list and you make an assessment and he's not on the top of your list, being number one, we understand you got family. We understand you have a wife. You have a husband. You got kids. But Jesus should be number one in your, in your house. Because you'll never see an open heaven. And your house is not aligned with heaven. Another thing about your people's houses. And I say this, I say this because my house been through this. Okay, I'm not going to lie. My, I'm, I, I'm very transparent. My house been through this. If, 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 if there's no order in your house. And, and, and your wife is trying to run the show. Okay, if your wife is trying to run the show and you don't have the order of heaven in your house, you'll never see God's blessing because God doesn't bless something that is disaligned. And if, and if you're not doing the right thing with your wife, okay, God will never answer your prayers. There's a balance. I'm married a year and a half. It's easier to cast out a devil than be married a year and a half. <laughs> because you see, it, it takes time to align. It takes time to get a rhythm. The whole, the whole thing, like when you first met, what are you doing? You're on the phone with her, and you're both breathing. What are you thinking about? <laughs> you miss me? Some days over, baby. 
You didn't, do, you didn't do nothing. You can manifest you want. I got you. I'm here. I'm here to help you. You manifest all you want. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you see, the enemy wants to distract from the anointing. And it's not her. She's a good person. Good sister, good husband. The enemy wants to distract to put up a show to take away from the anointing. You're not going to draw me to that arena. I've been there, done, I got the t-shirt. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come right now. We ask you to forgive us. We repent from here, for now, for yesterday, and the things that we have done. Mind thinking, words, thinking, thoughts, and behaviors. We're going to cover it all tonight. We're going to ask you to forgive us. We truly repent not remorse because you don't forgive remorse you forgive true repentance and we ask you in the name of your son cleanse us forgive us for our compromising for negotiating with the world with the devil and with things that doesn't represent you please lord have mercy on us put us back in your perfect will so we can be the vessels of honor the arrows in your quiver and you could be proud that you picked us in Jesus mighty name amen okay now I, I'm I'm how you how we going we said yesterday we're gonna roll people over here. Yeah, yeah, come this way, right? I pray for people this way, and then you you can go out that way. Right? Come on down, come on down, and as you come, okay, the line over there. Okay, as you come, and I pray for you. Where are they going? I want to just lay hands. Yeah, get right here. I want to lay hands on you. I want to lay hands on you. Yeah. After I lay hands on you, then you, you can go that way. My brother, you're a champion Jesus. Amen. Amen. I see you in Hallelujah Boulevard one day. There's a Hallelujah Boulevard, in case you don't know. Around around the block, there's a there's a Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Amen. So listen. This is what we're going to do. Listen, listen, this is what we're going to do. The, uh, pay, listen to the ushers. Listen, listen to the ushers. They're helping you out so you can get your blessing. Amen? They're helping you out. So there's order in the house, and we're going to do it right. Amen? So listen, as I pray, as I pray, listen, as you come up, they, we, we, don't do the, we don't do the TBN thing. We don't do magic in this house. We don't believe in magic. We don't believe in Harvey Potter. We don't believe in Halloween. We don't believe in soul see. We believe the Holy Spirit set you free. But you have to you have to come in agreement. Listen, you have to come in agreement. Come in agreement with the Holy Spirit. As you come, whatever you're struggling with, whatever is hindering you, delay, blockage just tormenting you, whatever devil is trying to deplete you, destroy you, any devil, any generation of curse in your family bloodline, every hindering, every delay, every blockage, every demonic attack over your life, you know the name of it. You know the circumstances of it. You know the situation of it. You now you bring it to the altar and I come in agreement with fuel and the Holy Spirit and we destroy it and then you get the victory. Amen? Don't come to the altar hoping you're going to get a word from the Lord. We, we don't do magic here. If God has a word, we know God will release it. But don't come here saying, oh, touch me, grab me, you know, molest me. No, we don't work that way. We, 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 we want to do things under the Holy Spirit in the house. Because if you come and you renounce and you come and you lay down your Isaac at the altar, Holy Spirit will meet you at the altar because you're coming with a genuine heart to be free. 
So Father, in the name of Jesus right now, we lock the doors of this building in the name of Jesus right now. We lock the doors of this building in the name of Jesus spiritually. Don't let no demon escape in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come in agreement with the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Every devil has to manifest. Every homosexual devil, every demonic devil of perversion right now, every demonic devil of pornography, Father God, hindering, delay, block of distraction, every demonic devil of witchcraft, witchcraft devil, witchcraft devil, witchcraft, every generational curse in the name of Jesus over our family bloodline, father, mother side, we break every demonic sickness of every kind, every diabetes, every high blood pressure devil, every infirmity devil in the name of Jesus right now. Devil, we put you on notice in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Every demonic curse, vex, voodoo that was spoken over your life. Every word that was spoken over your life, over your family. You'll be like your dad. You'll be like your mother. I break those things off you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Every tormented devil, every suicide, every oppression, depression devil. Devil, you got to go. In the name of Jesus Christ. We break legal rights. We break strongholds and bondages. In the name of Jesus right now. Fire in the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus right now. Holy Spirit right now. In the name of Jesus Christ right now. Every oppression, every stronghold, every bondage right now. In the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. Receive what God has for you. In the name of Jesus right now. Right now. Right now. Holy Spirit, have your ways. In the name of Jesus right now. Touch my brother from the crown. Every demonic addiction right now has to go in the name of Jesus right now every oppression depression if you were molested if you were raped right now every abortion devil has to go in the name of Jesus right now father right now in the name of Jesus father touch my brothers and make them evangelists make them vessels of honor for the glory of God and the souls of men in the name of Jesus right now Holy Spirit have your ways in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we touch and agree Holy Spirit upon my brothers that you set them on fire. Fill up, fill up the tank. Fill up the tank. In the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus right now. 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 Every tormenting devil. In the name of Jesus Christ right now. Holy Spirit, have your ways. Right now. Right now. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. You got to go in the name of Jesus. You got to go in the name of Jesus. You got to go in the name of Jesus. You got to go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now, Holy Spirit, have your way. Put the fire upon this devil. Now, my sister, this devil, in the name of Jesus, right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, break every strong. We break every bondage in the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. Holy Spirit, have your ways. Right now, right now, right now. Fire! In the name of Jesus, right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. We touch and agree with the Holy Spirit right now over your life. Fire! In the name of Jesus, right now. In the name of Jesus. As I go, as I go, as I go. Go down there. Okay. In the name of Okay. In, amen. In the name of Jesus, right now. Huh? Over here? Okay. Father, right now. Okay. Right now. Hey, baby. Send it. Do me a favor. People, move back a little bit. Move back a little bit. Move back a little bit so I can get down here with y'all. Come in agreement in the name of Jesus. Hey, baby. Send it. Hey, baby. Send it. Hey, baby. Send it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now, Holy Spirit, right now, we smite these devils with the blood of Jesus. Father, right now, we smite these devils with the blood of Jesus. We smite them in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Holy Spirit, have your ways. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, receive what God has for you. Fire in the name of Jesus. Right now. Fire in the name of Jesus. Right now. Abandonment devil. Right now. Devil, you're a liar. Right now. Every devil is tormenting his brother. Fire! Receive what God has for you. Let him go. Turn this way. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, fire! Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive, receive in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, right now, 
Touch my brother from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Touch him now, Holy Spirit. Touch him now in the name of Jesus. Receive. In the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. Receive. Receive, my brother. Receive what God has for you. You're my inner circle. We touch and decree, Holy Spirit, upon my brother. We hinder and delay blockages. Fire. Father God. Fire in the name of Jesus. Right now. Every tormenting devil. Fire. Right now, receive what God has for you. Fire in the name of Jesus right now. Right now, right now, right now. Fire in the name of Jesus right now. Holy Spirit, fire in the name of Jesus right now. Right now, every hindrance, every delay, every blockage, every distraction against you. In the name of Jesus right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. But the fire of God upon every demonic stronghold right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Right now. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit right now. Right now. Fire. Touch and agree. That's right. Touch and agree. What I got over here. Anybody. Right now. That's right. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name, let it go then, let it go. Suicide, anger, rebellion. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. 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 Right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. Right now. Shut your mouth, devil. No one's talking to you. Right. That's right. That's right. No one's talking to you. you either you manifest, you go. Mother, shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. I'm not asking you what you are. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. You're going to be free. You free? Okay, free. Have a seat then. Right now. Right now, 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 Holy Spirit, right now, right now, right now, break, right now, that's right, that's right, break, in the name of Jesus, break, and then fire, in the name of Jesus, receive what God has for you, receive, 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 that's right, Come, keep coming out, we got to get a basket over there, raise your hand, don't be distracted, raise your hand, receive what God has for you. Right now, right now, drink the blood and die, devil. Right now, fire in the name of Jesus, right now. Fire in the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, right now, every tormenting devil. Now, in the name of Jesus. But the fire, God, upon every tormenting devil. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ, right now. Release her now. Release her. Release her in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, right now. Fire in the name of Jesus, right now. Set her free, Lord. Fire in the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive right now, right now, right now. Raise up your hands. So, Lord, I surrender all to have it all in you. Right now, fire right now. Receive what God has for you. Receive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, have your ways. This is your house. Ain't no devil be able to stand here. Fire right now. Receive what God has for you. Receive. Every hindering, delay, and block of distraction. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now, right now, fire. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Let it go back. She has to go back. In the name of Jesus. Fire, in the name of Jesus Christ, right now. Right now. Right now. Break, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I go this way. Huh? No distraction. That's all it is. Right now. Right now. Fuego. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Receive. In Jesus' name. Receive. Hallelujah. Fire. In the name of Jesus. Right now, Holy Spirit, breathe on her. Every every hindering, delay, blockages. Right now, breathe on you. Breathe fire, 
Jesus, Jesus, right now. Receive, guys. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Fire. Touch and agree. Holy Spirit, touch and agree. Hey, baby. Shende, bababa, shende, hababashia. In the name of Jesus, ready? In the name of Jesus, right now, right now. Fire anointing, fire anointing, fire anointing, fire anointing. In the name of Jesus, right now. Father, right now, every hand delay blocks. Fire in the name of Jesus, receive it now. Yes, Jesus. Listen, I'll, I want to say something real quick. If I pray for you and you and you grab the book, make sure you go out there and do the right thing. I know where you live. In the name of Jesus. Right now, fire. In Jesus' name, receive what God has for you. God is bringing a fresh anointing upon my brothers and sisters. Go that way, right? Right now. Which way to go? I don't know which way to go anymore. I go that way, this way, right now, right now. Raise up your hands, hey baby, shende, hey baby, shete, hey baby, shende, hababashia. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, touch and agree, touch and agree, fill up your cup, fill up your cup. God is giving you new wine for new wine skin. Right now, right now, over your life, over your purpose, over your destiny. In Jesus' mighty name, receive. In the name of Jesus. My little people, do me a favor, come up. Come up here to the altar. Come up to the altar. All my little people, come up to the altar. You little people, not you. You, how old are you? What, how old are you? You're not little. Okay, okay, step down. What's wrong with you? My little people like this. My little people. All my little people. Where my little people? Where my little people? Turn this way. You my gang. Turn this way. Turn this way. Watch these people. Watch the old people. I got you. I got your back. All my little people. There's more coming. Where, where are they? All right, bring all my little people to the altar. We're going to do a separate altar call for you because you're special for Jesus. <laughs> you stay right there. You're special for Jesus. Listen, in the Bible, God had all young people. Esther, David, Daniel, all young people. God loves young people. You, you little on the outside, but you're big on the inside. Man, all young people come up to the altar. Y'all ready? You're married? Wow, long time. All right. How much? 43 years. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hold, hold this. Evangelistic calling, both of you. Right, oh, where, where, where we at? Where we at? Bring them out this way so I can bring them out. My sister, step back a little bit so I can help you. Raise up your hands. Hey, baby, shut the hell up. In the name of Jesus, right now, Father, we just touch and agree. Touch and agree. Holy Spirit, touch and agree. Touch and agree. Touch and agree. Touch and agree. Fire. See what God has for you. What teenage, what teenagers? Yeah, teenagers, yeah, teenagers, yeah. Yeah, yeah, behind them. Yeah, yeah. Fire, fire, Holy Spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, my sister. Fire, 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 fire,
Let the Lord touch you from the crown of your head to your feet. Every demonic hindering, delayed block is this right now. Every oppression. Break in the name of Jesus right now. Holy Spirit, right now. Right now. Right now. Holy Spirit, we trust you. Right now. Heal my sister. Lord, set her free. Every tormenting devil over your mind. Break in the name of Jesus. You can't stay. You can't stay in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Fire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, right now. Fresh anointing, fresh fire. Fire. Right now, upon my sister, from the crown of her head to the sole of feet, devil, you're a liar. Every false reality, every false thinking, every false mindsets, every hinder, every delay. Forgive yourself, say to the Lord. Forgive yourself. Fire. Forgive yourself, say to the Lord. Let it go. Let it go. That poison in the name of Jesus right now. Let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus right now. Let it go. Right now. Agreement for your victory right now. For your purpose and your destiny. You will give birth to it right now. In the name of Jesus right now. Lord, touch my brother. Make them the evangelist. Father, revelation and clarity and spirit to know who he is in Christ. Right now. Fire. Receive. Receive from Jesus. Receive what God has for you. Right now. Fire. Come, renounce, 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 renounce. Don't let the devil, don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil know something's wrong. Let me pray for your brothers right here, and then you give me your 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 YouTube stuff. I want to see who you are.
All right. Listen, right where you are, right where you are, right there, raise your hands. You're going to repeat after me. You raise your hands. Okay? Jesus loves you. He made you. He gave you a birthday. He sent you to time because you are important to him. I don't care who you're born with. I don't care where you're born. You have greatness in you. You have purpose in you. You have destiny in you. Don't look at yourself by the size of your neighborhood, the size of your family, or the size of the things in your family that are shortcoming. Say, Lord Jesus, I come today. I want to hear all of you say aloud, Lord Jesus, I come today. I give you my life complete and fully. Forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart. You got to repeat too. I'm watching you. You got to good looking here. Repeat. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I give you the pen of my story. I will never, ever, ever see a day of sickness in my life. I will never ever see a day of backsliding in my life. I will hold on to my innocence and to Jesus Christ bring the right person into my life. I will give it all to have it on him. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me anointing. Give me revelation. Give me clarity. And give me, your, give me relationship. Intimacy with you. Lord, you love the little people. Lord, you love the little people. Say it after me. It's that simple. I renounce every social media. Every generation of curse in my family bloodline. That's not my identity. I'm in Christ now. That's my identity. My new one and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. No yawning. Amen. Now you're part of, you're part of the army. Amen. That's right. In Jesus' name. So, Father, we break backlash, retaliation, revenge, spirit, transfer, the spirit, retribution, devil, reinforcement, devils, monitoring devils. We break witchcraft, generation of curses, bloodline curses, curses, words that we've spoken that are not of us, of you. We break every demonic word that was spoken over our lives in the name of Jesus. Every curse, every vex, for voodoo, regeneration of curses, religion of lighting candles, altars, ceremonies, witchcraft agreement, cultural devils. My mother did it. My father did it. So I do it. I break those things in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I give you permission to invade my life, my perfect will. Let that be yours. I give you myself. I give you it all to have it all in you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So guess what? Round two tomorrow. Are you guys ready? Amen. So come expecting. Doors open at 5.30. Come ready to receive. We'll see you all again. Don't forget, those that got the book, we don't want you cursed. Stop by there, pay for your book, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Blessings. God bless you. Don't, 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 get, don't let me backslide. Don't let the curse go. Don't, yeah, don't, don't let the demons go home with you. You don't pay that book. <laughs>